Welcome to the Canadian Cluster. In this podcast, Steve Wheeler opens in prayer. Then Amanda sings the song Cornerstone. Our talk today is also brought to us by Steve Wheeler. And this week he is talking on Psalm 139. Then Steve will lead us in our intercessory prayers. Then to close our podcast, Amanda will sing the song With All I Am. Father God, we thank you for today. This is your day, the day that you have made, and we will rejoice in it. Help us, Father, to listen to the words of the songs and the scriptures and the message today. Help us to receive it and help us to become more like you in every way. Amen.
we serve an awesome God, a God who cares for each of us individually. This is the same God who created the entire universe out of nothing. This is the same God who is known as the Ancient of Days, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty King, the Everlasting Father. This is our Creator God who we serve. And often we ask ourselves the question, how can we know God and how can God know us? There are something like seven billion, nearly eight billion people in the world. How could God know each of us individually, intimately? Scripture reading from today will hopefully answer that. I'm going to read from Psalm 139. I've been asked to read from verses 1 to 9, but I'm going to read from verses 1 to 10 because that seems to be a natural conclusion to this sequence of uh, verses. And I can do that because I've got the microphone. So here we go. This is Psalm 139, and I'm reading from the, the New International Version. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in. Behind and before, you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. That's an amazing scripture. It's one of my favourite psalms, actually, 139, and it's something which I've written songs about. I've actually studied it in quite some detail, and um, it's fascinating. It's over 3,000 years old, and most people, most scholars would agree that it was written by King David, and it speaks of the all-knowingness of the Father. It talks about his intimate knowledge of his creation, his passionate desire to know you and me personally and intimately. But how can that possibly be? How does God know you and how does God know me so well? Does anybody really know you? <laughs> does anybody really know who I am? Uh, a lot of psychologists would agree that it's almost impossible for someone to know somebody else as well as they know themselves. And in fact, sometimes we don't even know ourselves very well, do we? Sometimes we doubt who we are, we have an identity crisis. But does anybody really know you? Well, God does, but who, who else knows you? Back in 1967, an English group by the name of the Beatles, um, I don't know if you've heard of them, I think probably you probably have because uh, they're probably the most successful rock band in history. They brought out an album called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And on side two, the first track of that side, was a song written by their guitarist George Harrison. And it was called Within You, Without You. And this was a, a bit of a lesson in philosophy because George Harrison wrote these, these words. He wrote, I was thinking about the space between us all and the people that hide themselves behind a wall of illusion. Now clearly that's talking about all of us because all of us have a space between us and the next person. There's no way, even if you're married to someone for many, many years, that that person will get to know you completely. There's always little walls and little hiding places and little secrets that we keep from each other. So nobody, I would say, knows another person completely as well as they know themselves. But God does. There are three reasons why God knows us so well and why the scriptures in Psalm 139 says all the things it says. 
I'll give them to you. There are, there are three reasons. The first reason is that he made you, he designed you. The second reason is he became like you. He became a person, he became a human being. And the third reason is, is that he sees our beginnings from our end. He's eternal, he's outside of time. Let me go through these in more detail for you. The first one, he made you, he designed you. In fact, God created the entire universe, didn't he? The Bible says he created it out of nothing. And he did it by his spoken word. Just the word was enough to create light and separate it from the darkness. Just enough, just one word was all he needed. And it's interesting because when you look at the universe, there is a design to it. Lots of uh, people who believe in uh, perhaps evolution would say, no, 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 it all came by accident. But no, there's a purpose, there's a, there's a design, there's a pattern to God's creation. And it's represented through mathematics and through science. Consider, for instance, the fact that as far as we know it, the earth that we live on is the only place in the whole universe where you can see a perfect solar eclipse where the sun is covered completely by the moon for one moment every so often. The simple fact is that the moon is 800 times smaller than the sun, but it's also 800 times closer exactly. Now, if that's a coincidence, then <laughs> um, I'm a Dutchman. Uh, the thing is, you see, you cannot explain these coincidences. There are so many of them. It points out to the fact that there's a design out there and there's a designer behind it. The human body is incredible. It's so complex and yet God knows it intimately and he was able to walk on this earth and see people who were in medical need and, and just literally touch them and say a word and they would be fixed. They would be made whole again whether it was leprosy or whether it was epilepsy or whether it was someone who'd actually died. He knew the body so well because he'd designed it himself and he was able to speak life into that situation. The Bible says later on in Psalm 139, in verse 13 in fact, it says, He knit me together in my mother's womb. So he knew us even before we were born. He knew us from the moment of conception. That's how much he knows you. Second point, he became like me, he became like you. The Bible says in Hebrews 2 verse 7 that he became a little lower than the angels. He actually stepped down into time and became a man, the man Christ Jesus. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 14 that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus was quite literally the God in human form. He was quite literally the Messiah, the Son of God, come to show us who he was. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that just as importantly, he experienced what we would experience. As a man living in first century Palestine under Roman occupation, he would have experienced the same issues and the same problems, the same desires, the same needs, the same urges that we go through as human beings in the 21st century. He experienced everything, all the emotions that we would go through now. He understands us intimately, so he became like us and therefore he can know us so well. And thirdly, he sees your beginning from your end. He sees the whole of things from outside of our perception of time and reality. We see everything from our perspective and it's very limited. We have four dimensions. We have um, length, breadth and depth, but we also have a sense of time that passes by. And we are, I suppose, constrained within those four dimensions, whereas God is much more beyond that. So if we were to see it from God's perspective, we would see a completely different thing. You see, the, the whole of the universe is held together by him. He controls it all. He holds it all in the palm of his hand. Colossians 1 verse 17 says, By him all things consist, they're all held together by his power, because he created it. 
Here's a scientific conundrum for you. I, I don't know if anyone knows the answer to this, but here's a question that very few scientists have got an explanation for. Why don't atoms simply collapse in on themselves? You see, the fact is, electrons, part of the atom, they're negatively charged. Protons, on the other hand, are positively charged. So therefore, they should collapse into each other because opposites should attract. But the electrons stay in orbit around the centre, the neutrons and the protons. Now, the only explanation I can find is the one that scientists offer currently, um, and that is the uncertainty principle. You know, where you can't, you can't pinpoint where um, a position of an atom is in relation to its momentum, or vice versa, you cannot see both. And I think the actual name uncertainty <laughs> gives it away, that scientists don't really have a clue why atoms don't collapse in on each other, or why they don't just fly off and destroy themselves. So God knows because he made it. By him, the Bible says, all things hold together. All things consist. Colossians 1, verse 17. So there you have it. Three reasons why God knows us so intimately. He knows us because he designed us. He made us. He created us. He knows us because he became like us, became a person, a man, and lived amongst us. And thirdly, he knows us because he can see our beginning from our end. If we could only see things from God's perspective, stand outside of time, we would see the whole of history in front of us unfolding. God knows everything because he is everywhere and he can see the beginning from the end. To finish with, I just want to quote you um, from the author Mark Twain, who allegedly said this, and it's very profound. He said, there are two, the two most important days in our lives are the day we were born and the day we find out why. And that's our eternal search, I suppose, for purpose in life. The purpose in life to know why we were born. And I'm telling you now that as a Christian, the purpose you were born for was to worship him and love him utterly. When you realise the nature, the true nature of God and his, his desire to have a, a personal relationship with you, you begin to understand why you're here. The Lord bless you. We come now to a time of intercession where we pray for others and lift them up before the Lord. Father God, we pray for all those across this world who are suffering at this time, whether it's because of natural disasters or whether it's because of human intervention. We pray for all those who are in refugee situations with no home. We pray for those who are out on the streets, homeless. And we lift up before you all those who are in war-torn areas, areas where infrastructure has fallen down, where there is a lack of food or sanitary conditions. Father God, we also pray for our own country, the United Kingdom, and all those in government across the nations of the UK. Father, would you lay your hand upon them and guide them, help them to make the right decisions to benefit the most people. We also think, Lord, of the National Health Service at this time, which is under great pressure because of the pandemic. We pray, Father God, that you will give strength and courage to all those who are on the front line, the paramedics and the medical staff, the nursing staff, the support staff, those who are working in the testing centres and those who are working in the vaccination centres. Father, be with each of them, Lord. We pray for all those who are nearer in our own community, who may be unwell at this time in body, in spirit or in mind. Let's take a few minutes just to remember and name them in our prayer.
Father, we bring all of these requests to you, and we ask you, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Into your hands I can meet again
joining us if this blessed you today then our other resources on our website may be of interest to you and share with your friends and family please do join us for our next podcast